Hello guys. Well, I'm finally getting around to returning Tim's BSA to him. It's been in the garage for probably much longer than it should have been. Yeah, I must admit I've got distracted with one or two things along the way, but um, also done quite a bit of work to, to Tim's bike, just to kind of get it roadworthy again. And uh, so just doing the final touches before I return it to him. This is a 1968 BSA Thunderbolt 650, a single carburetor. It's sort of the cut down version of the Lightning. Um, but a uh, real interesting bike, I would say. There's been quite a few adjustments and modifications along the way, so I would say it's far from standard. I do have the side covers. I'll put those on as well before I get everything back together. I'll take another video of it um, before I return it. Yeah, there were quite a few jobs done to the bike, but I, I thought I'd just go over some of the highlights. One of the bigger jobs was rebuilding the clutch. Um, so just disassembled it, uh, added new springs and those nuts there. Uh, plates were okay. Um, one of the, the backing plates was broken um, and got new thrust washers, fitted all that, re-tightened the, the primary chain. Also rewired the bike. Yeah, the wiring was quite a mess, so I got a brand new wiring loom and installed that. Also installed these uh, gaiters. They're compressed a little now because of the tie downs, but uh, they look really nice. And please check out my other video for uh, installing those. That was a fun project. Also removed both wheels and checked brakes at the front and at the rear. And they're, they're in decent condition. My father-in-law, Peter, and I also repaired this muffler as well. You know, it's non-standard as you can see. It's a, it's, it's pretty loud. It sounds great, actually. I'm not sure if it's street legal, but it, uh, it does sound good. Also rerouted quite a few of the cables. They seem to be going in all kinds of directions, so they're looking a lot better now. One of the bigger problems with this bike is that it wet sumps a lot. And so uh, instead of having to keep removing this uh, sump cover, um, what I've done is installed one of these new SRM uh, sump plug plates that comes with this integral removal screw. It's a really nice bit of kit actually. And, um, but I've still got a couple of leaks and I think what's happening is it's leaking through the threads of these Allen screws, these Allen bolts. So um, I've been through and added some plumber's tape um, that seems to have cured it for now, but I'll take another look. Maybe once the bike's had a little bit of a run. Yeah, and then just a few other little routine jobs. So, uh, fitted a new battery and a battery tender. Uh, checked all the cables, the electrics, um, changed the oil. Uh, the levers, the levers, uh, they were sort of loose. Some of the bolts were coming out, fixed all that. Um, oh, rebuilt the carburetor. That was a big one. Yeah, I just took the carb off and uh, ran it through the ultrasound cleaner. Um, cable lengths, that's something to be looked at in the future. This front tyre needs to be changed as well. I think it's from 1990 or something. Uh, the gas tank as well was too high and the handlebars were scratching it, so I uh, lowered that down. Um, the primary was completely overfilled, so fix that, or we'll be fixing that when I put the primary back on. And uh, a main stand rubber, all that sort of thing. I've got a new set of rubbers going on as well before I finally get it back to Tim. Here's the moment of truth. I'm going to try and restart the bike again. It's been several months uh, since it ran. Uh, quite a few months actually. So I'll give it a few kicks over and then um, hopefully the gas is still relatively fresh. And then we'll see if this baby will fire. All right.
Well, that wasn't too successful. I kicked and kicked, and it would not start. It didn't even fire or pop or anything, so um, I took the uh, spark plugs out, and uh, yeah, I was getting a spark. I actually brought the bike back into the garage, stuck it on the bench, turned the lights off, kicked it over a few times, and um, there's definitely a spark on both sides, so actually the spark plugs are pretty dry, so I suspect that fuel isn't getting through from this single bloody Emil carburetor, so I'm going to take it off. I mean, it should run like a clock, this thing, quite easily, and it's quite a simple carb, so I'll take the carb off, um, clean it out. I suspect the main jet's got blocked to with it being stood still here in the garage for a while. Yeah, I'll just show you the spark plug. Well, one of them anyway. They didn't even smell of gas. You know, sometimes you can do the sniff test and uh, usually if they smell of gas, you know that some gas is getting through, but they were dry as a bone. And I tickle that carb a lot. I mean, gas was pouring out onto the crankcase, so... Um, Oh, I need to put some copper seal on there, a little bit more. I don't know if you can see this, but it's pretty dry. Actually, I'll give them a clean as well. Yeah, it doesn't even look uh, moist or anything. And uh, the sniff test, yeah, it's dry. So I suspect um, all it is is that gas simply isn't passing through from the carburetor through this manifold into the combustion chamber as well. So hopefully it should be a pretty simple job. I'll um, start by taking off this um, air filter. Uh, it just screws off and then take the carb off. Um, I'll show you do how I do it. It's quite straightforward. It's just a standard Amel carburetor. Um, clean it up, see if, I can, see if I can find where the jets are blocked. Pop it back on, uh, refit everything, and then oh, I'll clean these spark plugs, and then try again. So I'll start by removing this air filter. Uh, this thing spins by itself if it's not too tight, so just kind of grab the plastic and you'll see it's um, it's on a thread on the end of the carburetor. Uh, I think this is how I got it on. It's a little tricky, there's not much room to play behind here, so I'll see if I can get it out. I'm just going to leave this back here for now. Uh, it's a little tricky to get out with all the cables and uh, the coils in the way and the carbs, so I'll leave it there. I'm going to remove the fuel lines here at the Petcocks rather than down at the Banjo. Um, so I'd like to just check out that float bowl and the pipes as well, so I'll take the whole assembly apart. and um, Just undo this first of all, this clamp, so that it doesn't twist too much when I'm trying to undo the the gas pipe it should hopefully yeah it allows it to twist while not twisting this pipe this is an air 5 8 I don't know if that's standard or non-standard for this bike oops there's gas in there well, that just shows you how much gas was built up in there, so... Yeah. And none of it made its way through to the combustion chamber. For some reason. And the same process on the other side. And then get to this pipe. Yeah. It's all tucked away a little. Five sixteenths Whitworths. These nuts. Uh, this nut may not come all the way off because of the uh, tickle. So what I'll do is I'll just edge it off a little bit. Yeah, it, I can feel it is kind of rubbing on that chamfer there. So just back it off a little bit on both sides. Start working it back and undoing the nut at the same time. Yeah, it's hit on this side as well. So just kind of. There we go. There's a lot of gas. 
to take the cap off next. Dis disconnect the um, the throttle and the choke cable. The air filter's sort of in the way. Hopefully, it will allow enough room to back the whole lot out. Okay, screw and washer off at this side. There we go. Finally. Sorry if my hand was in the way there, but that that's the nut and the washer off. Okay, now I have to, probably going to have to deal with this because it's going to prevent this um, carburetor coming off. Okay, I guess I have to deal with that after all. Okay, that's the air filter. I just pushed a little harder. It, it pushed against some of the, the wires, but uh, I don't think there's any damage done or anything. It didn't, it didn't disjoint them or move them. So now we can start talking about removing the carburetor. And, uh, well, at least backing it off the spigot anyway. And then need to start removing the throttle and the choke cables. And that's the carb out of the way. And next I'm just going to use a little shorty screwdriver to get into these uh, Phillips uh, headed screws on the top otherwise you just can't get in there so. This allows me to remove the cap and then the slider will come out the throttle slide. A little tug. Come on. Two more threads. All right, and I'll be inspecting this as well. I'll probably take this assembly apart, or at least all this, all the springs and everything, make sure that to, the needle's okay and everything. So that came out all right. It looks like it's sliding up and everything, up and down okay. So now we have the carburetor off the bike. So this is the carburetor disassembled on the bench and so far so good actually, nothing uh, untoward by the looks of it. The um, the main jet, I've checked the main jet and also the needle jet and they're the right size so uh, just looking at the manual here, just I've done this before but <laughs> I thought I would double check anyway but uh, for the Thunderbolt the, uh, the main jet's at 230 and the needle jet's 0.106 inches so uh, yeah they're fine and actually they were clear and they're they're pretty big um pretty big holes i could tell immediately that they weren't clogged up with anything so um i think that's it really i mean i'm just going to put it back together i'll give it a little clean there's one thing maybe that uh that o-ring there it was pretty flat against uh, the manifold so i'll check this for squareness as well um, but you know, it doesn't it, there wasn't sort of a, a high or a proud profile to it, which means that it would have created a bit of seal. So uh, I'll check that, and then I'll start turning my attention to uh, the throttle slide, uh, the choke, and cables and positioning of the needle. I don't think this is going to be the problem for the starting of the bike. Uh, but what I've done is I've just laid the carburetor on a flat surface. This is just a um, refrigerator in the garage. Uh, so a nice flat machined surface. Just to see if there's any warping on the flange, on the manifold. And there is a little bit. So you'll see it does rock between the two studs. So um, I don't think I've noticed this before. And I would suspect that this could potentially result in you know poor running. 
um, which was a problem actually but uh, it depends how far it was clamped down I guess on, onto the gasket of the manifold that fits to the cylinder head but uh, what I'll do is um, I'll rub this down with some fine emery cloth or wet and dry and see if I can get that distortion out of there so what that what, how this happens is when you screw down uh, too tightly on these studs and it, it causes a warping to occur so uh, yeah I'm glad I found this but I don't think it's the cause of the the bad starting So it's a lot better now. I took more material off the carburetor flange than I expected actually and uh, resorted to even a more coarse uh, sandpaper to rub it down. I think it was 150 grit and so uh, it's a lot better now. I mean it, it rocks a little bit. I can just sort of sense it rocking but maybe that's just uh, a slight improvement. I think that will be out balanced out by um, when I tighten it up onto the the carburetor manifold so and uh, yeah of course that's a nice shiny flat surface now but uh, what I'll need to do is take the carburetor apart again and um, just give it a good old clean out just in case there's any of the deposits from the rubbing down that have got into the bore or any of the jets so that'll be the next job and uh, you know as always one job leads leads to 10 others right what was I just saying a minute ago about one job turning into 10 jobs? So I took the coils off trying to make a little bit of room to put the carb and the filter back and uh, I noticed that the stator wire had broken and so I never replaced this. This is that brittle hard plastic wire that comes, well there's two wires that come from the stator. One here the bullet had broken inside of this connector so that's the bullet and then I realised as I looked closer at the wire as well, the other wire, that it was so brittle that um, it also snapped as well with just a little bit of twisting. So uh, I guess I'm taking the stator off. Um, I've tried to, I thought perhaps I could peel back this wire or even cut, cut it back to unsheath it so that I could uh, solder it here while the, the wires are still attached to the stator and on the bike. But there's no way that that's going to happen so I'm going to take this all out and then do a proper thorough job in um, soldering wire to this and then bring it back out and then reattach it to the wiring here so uh, more to follow I'm going to do a separate video on that because this video is already getting pretty long so um, to be continued